At this point, I am about physically 85% done with the roof framing, and in terms of the technical challenge, about 70-65% done with the roof framing. You can see I got this first rake edge on, and as you can see from the lower one too, the rake edges run a foot beyond the sidewall, because I want the soffit that's along the bottom here, you can see where my foot is, the soffit, I want that soffit to come and wrap around the sides. So up here we've got the, the clear story wall, they project up a foot to create a foot soffit, and then they run out a foot, and that same soffit's going to run down the side and will run along the bottom and wrap around this whole plane of the roof. So I prefabricated, well, after setting one and cutting these bird's mouths at the top and the bottom with the uh, cordless jigsaw, I then prefabricated this soffit piece uh, on the bench downstairs. So once that soffit piece was made, I installed it. It was <laughs> harder than it may look because you have to let the whole thing hang off the side because the inner of the two rafters, the one that's closer to us, rests right on the edge of the framing down at this corner and up at that corner. And the rest, the remaining 12 inch width of the soffit hangs out there. So getting it in place and relatively plumb while I screwed it in was a little bit of a pain in the butt. And you could see up there, I scabbed on that little piece because I ended up having to sink three screws in the top because it kept shifting as the screws were, were biting. So uh, I got a little crack right in there, right where my middle finger is pointing right now. So I just cut a, a bird's mouth into a scrap, ran it across. That bird's mouth, uh, the scrap piece, is a single screw well attached to this header here. And then I've got three of those big Timbermate screws on the top and bottom just to sister it up and provide just a little bit extra strength right there. So once I got the first one done, I then ran out 16 inches on center and made marks along the bottom header and the top header and then I laid them in and I would loose lay them and then from the bottom I would install one Timbermate screw and I was using the 6 inch Timbermates and the 4 inch Timbermates which I'm going to show you even though they're the same thing but four inches long. Um, and a single one, I started screwing them down from the top, but I found I had better success, less splitting, if I screwed them up from the bottom. And you basically take the corner of that header and toe screw up and into it. And Timberbait says that's equivalent to a Tico with a bunch of the special Tico nails. All I'll tell you is it's strong as hell and there is no movement there at all. Um, so I got them all installed along the bottom and screwed in. Then I shifted the ladder I shifted them side to side to meet the mark in the top and I screwed them in the top. So now these are all done up to this notch here where the framing goes around this tree. Uh, the one that just fell 16 inches on center is here, just a few inches from the edge. So I just set a second one here right on the edge. And then if I take a step back, uh, right here we have two pre-cut pieces and that's to build the soffit it's going to hang off on this side. And then what I still need to do is make two more rafters that will land here uh, from the top of that wall in front of the tree up to this header here. But because I want to maintain the same line of the roof, you can see they don't actually rest on that header. So what I'm going to do, and this will be for the next time I'm out here, probably next weekend, is I'm going to take some two bys on the plane of the roof and run them out here. I'll clamp them to the installed rafters. I'll take the new rafters, I'll bring them up to the bottom and clamp them on, and then with them just hanging there in place, then I'll take relative dimensioning and measure for the little knee wall I need to build here, and I'll almost fit that wall in underneath the rafters with the rafters hanging. I figured that was the easiest way to make sure everything fits together, and I take the plane of the roof and carry it across. And then once I get the knee wall done, then from here out I'll have that same 12 inch soffit, so that the soffit that runs along the bottom We'll run along the side and along the top, and oh, excuse me, I have to shift, and it'll run here along this edge. And then when it hits for the tree, I think that's just going to be a simple notch in the roof. I don't believe I'm going to have a soffit of any sort. Clearly, I don't have the room for a 12-inch soffit because of the tree. And I was debating whether I should have a couple-inch soffit or no soffit at all. And I believe that that little eave and that little rake edge that it creates around the tree, there'll simply be no soffit because that's the back corner of it, it's hard to see. Aesthetically, it's not gonna make a difference, and functionally, it's gonna be a lot easier to fabricate without a soffit at that point. So, 
So that's where the roof sa framing stands right now. With the framing almost done, and certainly all the framing on this front face done, it's beginning to take form, and you can begin to appreciate what the tree house is gonna look, at, look like. The trees are kind of in the way. I, I've previously mentioned that it's back here out of view uh, intentionally. It's kind of tucked into the backyard where you can barely see it from the house. But hopefully this gives you an idea what the form of the tree house is going to look like. And these are the front two faces that I'm walking between uh, as we come around. This is essentially the back of the tree house. And even here, you still have that 12 inch overhang in the soffit for the roof. And that last tree where we're not gonna have a soffit is really back here in the corner. And if you look down at the ground, you can see that our compost starts there. So you, you don't even really walk back there. You can see this is what passes for grass in the back of our tree covered backyard. Um, and the tree that makes the corner of the treehouse is really on the edge of where the grass and dirt and moss ends and the compost pile begins. You can see on top of the compost pile, those are the trees that I took down as the first step of clearing for the treehouse. Um, so as we come back here, it's going to be hard to see that corner. You would have to be in the compost up and out of the yard to see it. So I'm not going to go too crazy on the aesthetics of that back corner because very few people will ever see it. Uh, so that is going to conclude this weekend on the treehouse.